All right, we're live. Um, so hello, everybody. Uh, glad to see everybody's face. Uh, and I would like to welcome everyone who will be watching this to our artist talk for the two shows that are currently up at UB Blake Cultural Center. Um, one is Abstract Constraints and the other is Jambalaya. So um, the first show, Abstract Constraints, features Emeka Chukwa, a Nigerian-born multidisciplinary artist and recent graduate from Maryland Institute College of Arts. Uh, his work combines creativity with critical thinking and focuses mainly on finding the midway point between minimalism and elaboration, as well as focusing on Afrofuturism, um, bringing together his uh, traditional rich Igbo, co Igbo culture. It's Igbo, right? That's how you say it? Okay. Um, so yes, so welcome. Glad to have you here. And next for the Jambalaya show, we have Akia Brion Brown, who is a photographer, writer, curator, and researcher whose personal work investigates the implications of historical race, racial and social structures in relation to the development of contemporary Black life and identity within America. That is written beautifully, I must say. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> you had to explain that one. Yeah. <laughs> Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So welcome everybody. Glad to see everybody here. Um, I've at times I have a I have a cat running around, so I might have to uh, mute if she gets a little wild. Um, yeah. Oh, and then I'm sorry, I didn't even introduce uh, the Derricks. So um, and when we have Derek Adams, uh, artist, multidisciplinary artist, and we have Derek Price, who is the executive director of UP Blake Cultural Center. So welcome everybody. Great, great to be here. I'm looking forward to talking about these two amazing exhibitions um, and hearing the, uh, you know, from the artists themselves about the work and inspiration for making the show and having it housed at UB Blake, which I think is an amazing uh, collaboration. And thank you. I'm just happy that um, both of these guys um, or people uh, chose to exhibit <laughs> at the UB Blake Center. We're really excited. So we're glad to have you guys. Thank you. So, um, Emeka, do you wanna do you wanna talk to us a little bit about about uh, your show? I'm gonna pull up um, a picture, uh, one of the document documented um, images. Um, where is it? Here we go. Um, and you guys let me know if you can see. Here we go. Let's see if it's pulled up. All right. What are you guys seeing on your screen? What'd you say? Like the whole So can you see can, can you see the image? Not yet. You can see the you have to click on it. Hold on, I clicked on it. Hold on. It should be full screen. Hold on. It is full screen. It's the it's the um I guess the desktop. Oh Lord! All right, hold on. Sorry, right, technical difficulties. Um, <laughs> all right, well here we go. How about this? How about you can just start talking about it, and then I'll figure out how to make sure I get it right. Oh, wait. I have to pick the painting, and then you're gonna click on it. For, then that's the whatever you want to do. I mean, I can have here. Let's see. This is a full one. Let's start sharing here. Yeah. How about now? Yeah. That works. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Hey. Um. The whole show after I constraints. Yeah, I just I just go and just talk about everything. Yeah. Mm. Um, the whole show, Abstract Constraints, is actually um, my thesis work for architecture. So um, throughout the time figuring out my thesis work, I was trying to use the like, um, process of architecture to paint essentially. And uh, most of my feedback came from the architecture department. So that kind of, that was like a main 
that was the main driving force going forward for the work. So yeah, every, it's all surrounded by architecture essentially. Um, and uh, I started off with the, you know, with the, with the small sketches and am I explaining the work or the show entirely? How about this? Uh, well, first I would, can you, explain where the title comes from so when we think abstract constraints those are um, oh. two things that are you know kind of opposite you know when we think abstract work we don't think about work that has necessarily has constraints it's like more free flowing um that sort of work so i mean i think you addressing the addressing the title at first would be a, a great way for uh, people that are watching this to understand what what the show is okay so i, I was making a system to think, like you know abstract work so that essentially is where the title comes from. You know, I was, um, you know, using limitations to create art. So yeah, abstract art that, you know, has a system and rigidity, I guess. And so you are, you graduated as an architect, our architecture major, right? So how does that, how does that play into your work? Is that, um, I guess, in, my, in what we're seeing, in what ways does that play into your work? I kind of, um, I mean, one thing that it would be a takeaway would be uh, mastering, I wouldn't say mastering, but, you know, learning lots about line work and line weights. Um, that's as well as, you know, scales and technical drawing. I prefer using like mo all the paintings were done essentially with technical drawing as well. So skill wise, um, that's that's where um, most of the most of the technicality in the drawings come from, and uh, yeah, it. Um, I did lots of um, projects um, revolving around you know spatial awareness, so transitions in the paintings as well. But right, Amaka, hold on. You're uh, wait, say oh, say say that again. I'm sorry. You're you're. Um, I did lots of, um, you know, drafts and pre precedents on, pre precedents on, you know, buildings and architecture as well. So I have, I guess I have, you know, good spatial awareness and that translated directly into my paintings. So, mm. Okay. Well, um, are the 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 spatial awareness and the spatial structures are they communicated through the social engagement of the work from the audience, or is the subject matter itself part of the conversation about space uh, represented in the paintings um, in relationship to? the figure or are these architectural conversations uh, that remove the figure from the space or the figure is engaged in some way or at least considered in the construction of the space and the spatial uh, relationship to the paintings and the objects in the space okay so to answer that question um the figure i mean when i was making all these the figure me, especially for the, you know, the larger paintings, um, was one of the limitations I set for myself to, you know, make the paintings. Um, in a way that, like, um, for instance, um, I started off with the first, I started off with the upscale painting on the far um, right. And every, every distance, to the vanishing point, every, no, no, not that one. I uh, know, I gotta click through, oh, no. <laughs> keep talking. Okay. So every distance um, from the vanishing point to, you know, the, the entire breadth of the painting um, weren't, wasn't just, you know, freely done. It was more so uh, me using my body to, you know, for mark making and to figure out um, the entire breadth of the painting. So I guess um, that's where the physical constraints come from. Um, I couldn't work outside 
I guess, you know, myself and the architect, the architecture constraints did mostly come from the technical drawing aspect itself. So, so it was a mix of both. I started off with like, you know, the T squares and, the, and, you know, compasses and French curves. And then I ended up upscaling everything to use of thread. So I can, you know, for the small ones, I started off with, you know, just on a drafting table. I ended up upscaling everything to use of thread and other sorts of, I even, I actually made the T square as well, like a large wooden one to find all my horizontals and verticals. And then, yeah, it was sort of me make just using, um, taking the drawing machines I already have and upscaling everything to, ha to have myself, you know, be a part of, those limitations. Mm -hmm. So I have a I have a question. So when I've seen, so what you're ultimately saying it was this like the base of that expansion, and then what it looks like to me is that as I as I see the other works, it almost seems like it's you know magnifying some portion of this painting that we're seeing here as the base for subsequent works. Is that what I'm saying? So as, I, as, as I went on, um, so the way um, we were working in the department was kind of just to overwork everything, basically. So um, if I was to do a, if I was to design a building for my thesis, I, um, it would it wasn't supposed to be. Hold on, my housemates are making some noise. I will go shut that down immediately. Hold on. No, you, uh, I think I think you're I think you're good. We can't. Can you guys hear? I think. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah, okay. But, Okay. Yeah, loud. Hold on. Give me a sec. <laughs> um, all right. Well, in the meantime, um, after after we after we go over uh, this, Aki, I'm gonna I was gonna switch gears and then have uh, have you talk about um, you know your show, and then from there we can have a little more back and forth about um, I'm back in general. I'm going to make a comment. I'm actually going into the center later and hopefully get some responses and reactions from people that are actually viewing the exhibit now. Mm -hmm. So I may drop off and then come back on in about 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm back. All right. Now, just, you, what'd you say? You can just go on. Well, yeah. Well, so we're. Um, we're gonna switch to um, we're gonna switch over to Akia so she can talk about uh, the exhibition, uh, the Jambalaya exhibition, and then then we're all in pretty much just engage in, in further conversation about the work that we've uh, that we're seeing. So we'll respond to that. Yeah. Um, all right. So let me pull up the other images. Let's start. Okay, here we go. Let's start with this one. All right, can everybody see it? Mm -hmm. All right, so this one, this is part of it. Um, this is part of the exhibition, and you know I can go to other ones, but this is um, we've all seen the the rest of it. So this this is a good image. Um, so Akia, can you tell us a little bit about um, about Jambalaya? Uh, Jambalaya really explores my own identity, um, sort of looking at the representation of Black femininity and Black womanhood and sort of looking at my own narrative and how that differs from um, pretty stereotypical representations, pretty homogenous representations of, of Black life. Um, so this is me sort of playing with fabric in particular. Um, and looking at um, these ideals of the Americana um, and thinking about myself as an African-American woman and Afro-Latina um, and how really being ge geographically centered um, in an area that's predominantly white, but also being Creole, being originally from New Orleans, sort of having my formational foundational years in Baltimore, really looking at how all of that uh, combines into um, how I see myself and how I've been influenced 
and using fabric and um, objects to sort of allude to all those juxtapositions. So um, it's really a, an explanation, exploration of my own self-identity, sort of questioning that um, and sort of building on my, my uh, larger body of work, Black Picket Fences, which look, looks at uh, Black suburban communities in relation to residential racial segregation. So this is sort of the more personal side of that. And I'm just going to scroll through some images and then anyone um, you can feel free to um, give some comments. Um, one thing that, one, one comment that I was excited to kind of talk to you about was one that I heard from a couple people for, or from works such as this one that's on the screen right now where it, it where you fully immerse yourself in the fabric um, and you know you were um, with the with the photograph you were essentially emerging from the um, from the fabric and um, so the way that it was interpreted with the the with some of the comments was you know you really really immersing yourself uh, within within the the subjects that are in these that are within these fabrics so here it's these um, they look to be white women in, I would say, the, maybe the 50s. The 50s. Uh, leisure, leisurely activities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, kind of kind of on the, on the side of a pinup um, representation. And it's kind of juxt juxtaposed this image of, you know, this very mm -hmm. idealistic um, black woman kind of, uh, you know, in contrast to this very, um, I guess, repetitive and almost uh, dominating image of uh, whiteness and white leisure, which I think is very strong in this particular work. And I like the playfulness of it. It has, you know, the, the fabric, which kind of is, is kind of representing this idea of, uh, of um, more whimsical. Um, next is kind of very, um, is Afro, um, very serious um, gestured uh, figure, which is you in the image, right? Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, um, I use myself as a subject a lot. Um, I think I have the easiest time sort of working through these themes with myself because I'm really exploring my own narrative. Um, so yeah, I've always, I've always been very interested in these um, symbols, especially looking at the way Black women have been represented and then looking uh, traditionally at these representations of women in American culture that are primarily white women. Um, so for me, this was a, a very fun sort of experiment um, being um, originally from Louisiana, but spending a lot of time in predominantly white conservative uh, pretty wealthy communities, um, I sort of am able to contrast uh, the imagery that I saw both in symbolism, but also in, in the physical um, everyday space that I'm navigating um, and sort of contrast that, um, especially with my hair in this particular series using the Afro, um, which is pretty indicative of a, a lot of political statements. Um, but even me benefiting from light skin privilege, but consciously like um, wearing my hair in locks and, and really like shielding myself from certain, like the ability to navigate through different racial identities. That's been something that's also um, really influenced the way I situate myself in these. So um, it's, it's, it's really fun, but it also has a lot of layers that I think you may or may not pick up on depending on who you are engaging with the work. Um, and then we have these, well, these were um, really interesting images um, that, uh, that, you, that you chose to display. Um, now we have, there, there's these and then there's a few other ones that are um, on that, on, the, on the, the, the wall to the left of that in the gallery. 
Um, but I was wondering if you could, if you could talk about these in particular, the the reason why you essentially you you use such contrast, um, you know, with the with the completely blacked out background, um, and then had these in particular rather than the the other images that had the you know same which had items but they were on like kente cloths and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that has always been interesting for me is looking at sort of mundane items and looking at the larger uh, sort of cultural and spiritual significance that they have, especially in um, African American communities. Um, I think it's, you know, one thing to talk about black communities, but to specifically look at African American culture, I think is something completely different. Um, so for me, looking at a specific adornment practices, and when I say adornment, really the way that we choose to um, present ourselves to the world, the way that we um, dress ourselves, how we wear our hair, jewelry, accessories, um, all of that is an ador adornment practice. And a lot of these items sort of go along with that, specifically for Black women, looking at the Marie's gel, um, the bamboo hoops, um, the toothbrush for the baby hairs, looking at all these things that um, are really symbols of assimilation, but also symbols of resilience at the same time. Um, so they sort of they sort of speak to a lot of things, but I do in my work like to have viewers do a certain amount of work themselves. Um, I don't like to give everything away, which is why I think these are a lot more simple, where you really have to force yourself to think. Um, you know, I've had, I've had um, black viewers look at this work and I've had white viewers look at this work and I've had a lot of white folks who come, they look at the work and they're like, wow, this is super dope, but I don't know what this means. And I think that it speaks to a lot, um, like how much you can insert yourself into these symbols. Um, and those barriers, I think, are just as important to actually understanding the, the significance of them. So um, I think it's a nice contrast to everything, which is sort of a little more loud, maybe a little easier to digest. Mm -hmm. um, but this sort of requires a certain amount of uh, like personal experience to really engage with it on a deeper level. I mean, one thing that kind of sticks out to me with this particular uh, series of works is the formal structure of how the subject is captured and the black background and even the, you know, the framing of them, they, they also appear to almost exist as a form of offering. And it also, um, the technical aspect of the way that it's shot also represents the idea of commerce and value. And I think that that comes out really clear in the work because with the black background, it kind of adds a spotlight on these objects in the way that you would see in a jewelry store or a place where you kind of want people to focus on the object and kind of really spend, spend the time meditating on the, on these objects and also the way they're presented kind of come off as being more of objects that are um, of desire, of, 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 of functionality in some way, almost like artifacts and this, and you know, and I think that with the other works, they actually have a really interesting conversation where they're starting to kind of dissect things from the other work in a way that um, because the other work has the other photographic image with the backdrop are more ornate in some aspects, these actually bring the conversation a little bit more to a place of meditation and uh, reflection, self-reflection. And feeling, you know, levels of inadequacy if you understand what they're about because they are not giving a lot of information, and um, and they're really presented as aesthetic objects, you know. Yeah, I appreciate that. Interestingly, for me, I mean, it was more of a, um, I guess, a nostalgia. I guess that's the word. Um, the truth of the matter is I didn't even notice. Now, of course, I'm going to have to go back and look at it. I didn't even notice the baby hair in the toothbrush. Um, was clearly all of these things as, you know, an African-American, 
are clearly some things that we automatically identify with um, or have some, many, many of us have some connection to, but I didn't notice the baby hair and the toothbrush and I was wondering why, what it, what it was. So even makes it that much more interesting to me anyway. Mm -hmm. Me too, me too. Um, I kind of want to know I've, something that popped into my head. I mean, I, I really want, um, I guess, a little background. So what we're, what we're essentially building with the exhibitions program at UB Blake is we have the ability to, sh to have two shows at once, um, which is, is wonderful because you essentially get two completely different experiences in you know, one trip to an art center. Um, but it's always, we, we've had, we've been doing, you know, group shows, but also, you know, two solo shows at the same time. And sometimes they communicate completely um, in, on different ends of the spectrum. Sometimes they relate more, sometimes they don't. Um, but I, I want to hear, it's always interesting to me to hear from, um, from each of you all what you thought or what, um, what ideas or thoughts uh, came across to you while, when you were viewing the other artists' work? I mean, because one, one, uh, one work, one installation is more kind of placing the, the, the figure in the center of these kind of more abstract conceptual spaces. And the other exhibition really is almost like a mirrored, uh, mirrored environment that really kind of plays off, I think, the, the dynamic uh, history and structure of, the, of uh, UB Blake and its audience in a way that one is very uh, much uh, acknowledging the viewer from um, a one-to-one -one perspective. And the other one, I think, is really thinking about maybe relational space. Um, I think one is metaphoric, one is physical in some ways. Uh, kind of relationship one is very conceptual in, in nature and the other one is a little bit more um, like tangible because it's using images of familiarity with the viewer to understand perspective in a different way but I think they both talk about space space and perception uh, I felt almost the same way walking through a Kia show and it says that the you know UB Blake has you said as you said two rooms and then I think on this you know case it's a very it's definitely rooms that really mirror each other. Like they're completely, almost complete opposites in the, in terms of art form. And I think that's really cool because you get, you know, both very completely distant, distinct, um, you know, environments or sorry, in arts um, exhibitions in, in the same, you know, space. Also, it, it, it it's, oh, what's the word I was looking for? It's, also very refreshing to like, you know, walk from one kind of, you know, experience to right, right into, you know, a distinct um, opposite, so. Well, I also think it's interesting, you know, because this, especially this show, um, it spans the diaspora uh, because one, you know, Ameka, you are from, you're originally from Nigeria. And mm -hmm. I mean, you're both here in Baltimore, but Akia, you know, you, Although you are, you know, you're, you're African-American, you also have, um, there's, there's a lot more to your uh, background as far as being Creole, like you said, Afro-Latina. So it's, it's um, there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, you know, differences in how both of you grew up. Um, so Mecca, it, it's kind of interesting to me, you know, like if, when, when you came, what I'm thinking, when you came to see the exhibition, um, what was your response to, um, you know, some of the, the documentation that Akia, that Akia's exhibition um, shows as far as her, uh, her upbringing in uh, Louisiana and, uh, you know, beyond, if any? Um, and, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm you thinking <laughs> upbringing is, uh, hmm. I guess did you pull 
the images up again. Yeah, sure. Well, we can we can put through some of them. Let's see. Um, there's one like well, you can tell me when to stop if you wanna you know if you wanna look at any or anything like that. Uh, I think I'm going backwards actually. Hold on. I really love how the fabric kind of drapes onto the drapes onto the floor. I really like that transition from the floor to see from the ceiling to the floor. And these small works are also beautiful. Are these photographic images or are they uh, just collage images? They are both photographic and collage. So these are um, some images that I found in um, my family's home in Columbus, Mississippi. So it's the home I'm inheriting from my grandfather. My grandfather grew up in this home, but his great grandfather uh, was born in. property after he was freed and he built this home where my grandfather grew up in so I found all of these images there and then um, have made collages from that okay yeah beautiful thank you and the, these were your correct me if I'm wrong were the, these were your newest works in the show yeah, the collages were the newest. Um, most of the portraits, I had shown them in D.C., but most of the portraits are newer portraits that I hadn't shown yet. So the fabrics were the same, but the portraits were new. So everything was in some way or another new. <laughs> these, 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 um, these pieces, they, remind me, they reminded me when I was walking through, they reminded me a lot of... Um, the photo, I think photo albums were like a very essential part of my growing up because like that was the main entertainment. A anytime you have like a guest over, it was just, yeah. Um, especially when I was very small and it was it was really the main, you know, form mode of entertainment for like, you know, your guests and that how, it was just culturally how everybody introduced guests into their, their homes. So these um, definitely kind of took my head there. And then the collage aspect of it kind of, um, how do I put this? It was, um, it was definitely something that you couldn't do with them because like those photos were kind of a bit too precious at home. At, at home. It's like those albums, we never touched them till like, you know, somebody was over, or I, I mean, I didn't, I guess they didn't want me to mess them up, but um, yeah, to my parents, they were extremely precious. So like seeing them in this kind of light or recalling them in this kind of light is, um, you know, really interesting to me. Uh, yeah. I mean, formally, they do have a certain level of, of complexity with, you know, seeing, you know, that you, you have this kind of biographical um, material um, that's very just dealing with some type of narrative you know for me as a viewer I may or may not necessarily be as aware of but just the way you've presented it it feels like the imagery that you're incorporating in the work you somehow um, intervene in the way that is presented to us and I feel that the way the mark making adds a certain level of um, intention on what you want us to see and the importance of these kind of marks on these uh, images as kind of uh, bookmarks in a way or a highlighter um, looking at uh, the photographic images. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, hold on, wait, there's a, there's a few that we haven't gone over that I think might be cool to, um, to look at where these are. It's such great images, again, by the way. Yeah, you really did a great job. Um, <clears throat> My favorite. Like work, you know, I'll go ahead. Your favorite, Derek? Yeah. It's yeah. Where, where are these? Um, so the, I guess the, the cloths, is this, is this the same cloth that is, that's hanging at the, um, on the ceiling? If um, I guess I'm I'm interested to know, Akia, what did you what did you think when you came to uh, 
see a mega show? Yeah, um, when I went and saw the mega show, it was um, very, um, I think, indicative of a certain lane of thinking that I think a lot of African Americans haven't been allowed to really explore, which is just thinking outside of blackness. Having thought rooted in the self, and I think a, a deeper way than I think most of us are really allowed to to sort of navigate. Um, so I think it, it's always interesting because I think um, Emeka is coming from a different perspective. Um, where um, you know, growing up, I had a. a best friend who was, she was first generation Cameroonian. So her perspective and her way of navigating through her blackness was very much rooted in being African. It was very much rooted in being Cameroonian and not being black. And I think that sort of um, influenced the way that she navigated through life a lot um, in a way that I think was a lot more free and had a lot more like confidence in the self and like your own imagination. So I think about that a lot when I jump into a Mecca's work, like thinking really in a way that's abstract, but in a way that um, I think a lot of African Americans really have not had the opportunity to think and really like, I guess sort of detach themselves from what it means to be like black in this landscape. Um, and so I think that comes with a certain level of being able to sort of think outside of the box in a lot of ways that I think is uh, pretty radical, but also such a privilege at the same time. Um, so I think it, it brought up a lot, a lot of that. Like I, I thought a lot about, um, the type of state your mind must be in to be able to like think in that way, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, just real quick, are you guys seeing Emeka's exhibition? Did I, did I do that right as far as screen sharing? It's still on my picture for me. Okay, hold on. All right, see, I know I did something wrong. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, but the, all right, let me, let, me, let, me, let me double check real quick. Um, now it should be, I guess, wait, hold on. What, what is it, it? You guys see it now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I just continue. I just wanted to make sure that, that was on. Wait, we have, I've, like, the, I've seen like the files, you know, pan in the, you know. Okay, hold on. Wow. It should, hold on. I'm trying to bring it now. Uh, how about now? No? No. Still no. All right, hold on. All right, hold on. Let me see one more time. There we go. There we go. All right, cool. So, um, I actually didn't get to ask, answer the question that Derek asked earlier. Um, mm -hmm. You noticed um, how everything has, you know, kind of like a... Uh, it yeah, how do I put this? It goes. It has this some um, sense of continu um, continuosity, I guess, when when you look through, and I that was very purposeful because um it the other three pieces that are on like on the screen right now, um actually all came from that very first origin piece. So I was saying how you know in the department we even when, when I was doing the precedent studies and you know drafting and all that. We we're walking. We we're, we're working in this kind of um, like in this kind of method, like you know, just to exhaust the work, the explorative work, I guess. Um, in a sense that if I was um, making, if I was designing a building, like, you know, for my thesis project, um, my instructors would encourage me to, you know, just keep analyzing. I guess the drawings, the space, or whatever you can find, whatever you can gather on, you know, the project. Like, um, um, if I was, you know, studying you know, the circulation in the president building, I would, you know, 
try to figure out more more than one way to go about that you know maybe more than one sectional drawings you might you might discover something new within each drawing maybe um especially with um katie romero because she was like my um, thesis instructor she was she had this um, idea that you know if you have if you render a if you render a space and you flip it and you take a screenshot you kind of have you have another you know another drawing or another yeah another element of the project essentially so i was doing that continuously like throughout the paintings um the first one to the far um right that one was like a zoomed in section of detail i wanted to do so i was thinking of it, i was thinking of it like you know like a, like i was doing a precedent study of my own work essentially but um new detail kind of came in you know as me working as you know an abstract painter so as that that particular piece is like it, it's essentially it's like a it's a zoom it's a zoomed in section of like the bottom right side of that um first um upscale um painting that's what and then from the the other ones um like the one at the far left, that was a reshuffle because I was working, like I was trying to work, you know, backwards. Um, because at the beginning of the upscale um, painting, I had, you know, I started off with, you know, line work, construction lines, you know, kind of building up the painting to towards the values and, you know, and the heavy body um, part, parts of the painting. And then I wanted to just, you know, flip, rework that and you know, work from, you know, values and trying to, you know, try to discover my, you know, construction lines and all that, like as a new way of, you know, working. So just inventing a new way of working essentially. And then from the one in the middle, I just wanted to, you know, reshuffle and be as more free as I was allowed in the other couple of paintings. So that's why I, I kind of, I like that one because that, that was the most violent out of all of them. So I kind of worked less, I toned in less, you know, less of the rules, more of the, you know, free flow. In that one that's what i challenged in that one so it, it when i was working on these three i was looking back i had the the large the large one pinned up and i was always working back from there so yeah that's kind of how those came about just to answer the question but yeah well there is some similarities in some of the geometric uh construction of the works in both shows one, you know, using, you know, traditional um, concepts of African pattern, patterning um, as a commentary on um, identity construction, um, which I, I kind of feel um, in the one show, it talks about the, well, they both talk about emergence in some ways, but the uh, one exhibition talks about the emergence out of things that are basically constructs that are existing around the figure and the navigational a reality of dealing with those things with or without um, um, the willingness to, um, or not even having the option to, uh, to or the, uh, the option to uh, ignore them because they're basically um, and purposely juxtaposed for the viewer to see the difference between the two with the figure and the pattern background and these particular works that I, I see in the emergence in a way that, <clears throat> yes, it's very, it's, it's representing a certain level of freedom and a certain level of, um, of, uh, of personage in a way that is beyond or separated from this idea of the idea of the restraint or the, or the idea of the restraint of representation. But they both, I think, speak on a, on a certain, idea of breaking through in some ways or breaking through um, certain um, certain boundaries or obstacles and, and, and the, these abstract works kind of exist as more of explosions in some ways, uh, explosions of con, uh, constraint. And so I mean I think that both exhibitions really work well because one again is you know one has this very much um, um, kind of image of things kind of breaking apart, um, opening up to space. And one is also kind of dealing with the same thing, but in a, in a, from, from a different perspective. And so I really like that they are, 
they have a lot of space in between for the viewer to um, to contemplate and to uh, kind of figure out where they are in the work or where they may not be. I think it's a lot of options to kind of like dig into the work and pull the work apart uh, in a way that can offer very different and distinct perspectives of both bodies of work in a way. Emeka, can you also talk to us? Because I, I think it's, um, when we talk about viewer interaction, obviously you having the balloons in the exhibition was a major part of it. Um, so can you talk to us about, um, I guess the, the purpose for the balloons as far as um, interaction, but also how it relates to your uh, concepts about space? Okay. So, um, I get, um, I mean, firstly, aesthetically, firstly, and then secondly, but I wouldn't say like that was the primary, ended up being the primary reason, no. Um, when, when I'm, when I'm like, you know, doing an exhibition, I'm trying to, I think of like the whole, you know, space collectively, as opposed to, you know, just hanging up the work and then letting people roam in and, you know, see the work, you know, so, um, um, I kind of use the balloons as a way to slow people down in this space. At the same time, I use it. I use, especially in um, in you know this show, it played a big role in lighting the space. And um, yeah, so I thought of you know how people you know the circulation, you know how people you know go through the space and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, essentially to slow, to one, to slow them down, two, for lighting. And, you know, if, uh, if, if I'm thinking of, you know, the whole space collectively, I, I just, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm constantly feeling like, you know, the rest of the show would need something, you know, it always needs something in my head. So, yeah, I was I was working the space essentially like I was working a you know painting, so yeah. Good answer. Yeah. Um. So I I wanted to know. Does anyone? I mean, do you, do you guys have any as the as the artists? Do you guys have any questions for one another? Find. You. I can't hear you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you can't hear me? Yes, You're I can. Good. You're good now. Okay. So, um, yeah, my question is, how did you feel about sort of curating an experience in this space with, you know, I guess the history of, of the space itself? Um, like, how did you feel about that? You mean doing something different against the, you know, history of the space? Is that what you meant? I mean, just considering that, like, how did you feel about, like, trying to activate the space, uh, you know, with the show? Um, I mean, if, if you thought about it at all, you know? No, I did. Um, I felt, <laughs> um, I felt, um, I felt I, was do I felt I was doing something a bit new. But like not too new. It's it's definitely been been done before, but not in this in this way. It's because um, what I've seen before is people do exhibitions of you know just the the balloons itself kind of you know acted as the work, the main you know the the center point, and it wasn't really for the you know going for the experience, but I, I have seen one with the one with the plastic, um, the balloons, the plastic, the, sorry, plastic balls just feel, filling the room, the all, all the same color, I forgot um, who did that. I think that was in DC, I'm not sure. So, I, I, I felt it was new in my, 
like um, in my in my mind, you know, having people experience both the space and the paintings at the same time. So you you yeah you kind of um, get two experiences rather than one in the in the show. You know, you you walk in, you have a bunch of balloons slowing you down, and then you get to observe the work, and then you know, it it felt more. Um, like an ex, like an addition to an event in my head. So, mm -hmm. is is that is that sort of the response that? So that that's the response you were hoping for. Is that the response that you received from the viewers, at least at the opening? I don't know what you've heard. Uh, right? first, at first, I was kind of worried because people thought that one. There was this one person that told me that they got the impression that they weren't supposed to go in. But I guess the for most of the people, then it got. I was fine after. So most of the people, they saw the chairs and they kind of just figured that okay, we should be able to, you know, step in. So I, I, the what I got was that you know they're very comfortable. Many people were comfortable walking in to this space. So yeah, that was um, why with the kind of the feedback I got, I got, and it it was very inviting. That's what I got from many people. So that I was happy about. I wanted to, I wanted it to, you know, be inviting to take you in and then you kind of experience the paintings last, you know, like as like finally, like a final destination you would, yeah. So that was the feedback I got that the balloons were inviting and they make you stay there too. So they make it, they make you stay there. People, people end up taking lots of pictures because of how, you know, the balloons were diffusing the light back up. And I primarily did that for the paintings but like as a show, as a, you know, as a collective show, um, yeah, that it made sense as well because people experienced it more as you know. How do I put this? More as uh, the people experienced it entirely as you know, an interior as rather than just walking in and you know checking out the painting. So yeah, I like that they experienced the whole room collectively. So, yeah, definitely, they definitely inspired lots of people to take pictures <laughs> as well, so. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, any, do you, um, Mecca, do you have any, any, any uh, questions? For for you? Um, I kind of felt her use of fabric was kind of similar to mine because it was like um, her having something other than the work, you know, introduce you to the space so i love that i i love that a lot and the like as derek said i love i love the way that the fabric was draping down from the ceilings and it felt also it felt equally inviting in, in a completely different sense because like it, it was balloons here and then there's fabric there and i love that kind of um i love the way they both you know had sorts of relevance in the show and yeah So I guess, mm, my question. I mean, our what? comment is fine too. I mean, if you if you don't have a question, no, no, you don't have a question. Have a question, but yeah, I I love the her, the way like he used the fabric to introduce people into the show as well. Yeah. Derek, do you have any do you have any any more questions about uh, the work, the show, anything else that's be up on? I mean, just as an observer and, you know, and being an admirer of both the works and the exhibition overall, I feel like these types of shows are exactly what E.B. Blake Center needs um, to do more of and to represent more of because I think it kind of digs into the complexity of what Blackness is and how it's such an international uh, conversation. It's not necessarily always a regional conversation. It has a lot of complex, complex layers of, uh, of lineage and um, both imposed and, and uh, imposed identity as well as I, um, identity that is celebrated. And, um, and I, I look at these, both of these exhibitions and see the richness of um, this conversation that I feel is, is something that is uh, being, being heard a lot more at this particular time because we're going through a very complex time with dealing with identity and representation. 
And I, I think, you know, this exhibition, um, I'm hoping it will be seen by, you know, a pretty consistent and amount of people while uh, on display at, at, at the center. Because I think this is gonna help kind of push the conversation, expand the conversation and the mission of what we're trying to do um, at the center for the contemporary art world and having a space, you know, that really focuses on these type of conversations, I think is also essential in a city like Baltimore, where there's very little um, showcasing for these types of conversation and these types of visual engagements in spaces like these. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of this and I'm looking forward to sending more people to see the exhibition. Thank you both for being and for working with us, for trusting us and allowing us to present your ideas, you know. Um, it's definitely a work in progress and it's coming along really well. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. Oh, sorry about that. There was some going on all the time. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I want to thank uh, all of you all for being on tonight. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that this is being brought to you by BOPA's Free Fall Baltimore Initiative. Um, uh -oh, oh, Derek's in the space right now. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're getting some live action. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for being a part of these uh, of these of these exhibitions are, are being being the the artists in these exhibitions are being a part of what we have going on um, at uh, at UB Blake. Um, and again, thank everybody for for your time. Uh, Derek, thank you for giving us the live thank you. Uh, live feed. <laughs> cool. We'll give you a little more. Yeah, music goes on everything. All right, all right, all right. Awesome.